Wind is a powerful source of energy on our planet. In fact, many of us have seen it in action, propelling sailboats across open seas or turning the blades of a farm's windmill to grind grain or pump water. Modern wind turbines are basically sleeker, higher-tech versions of the windmills of the past. But instead of using the wind to do farm work, they're designed to convert wind energy into electricity. Here's how it works. Wind blowing across a turbine's blade creates more pressure on one side of the blade than the other. This causes the mechanism of all three connected blades to turn. This rotation pushes on a series of spinning parts inside the body of the turbine, which in turn spins a generator, producing electricity. Because wind is always blowing somewhere across the surface of the Earth, it's considered a renewable resource. And because the only thing required to turn a wind turbine is moving air, wind farms emit no greenhouse gases. However, even though it's clean and abundant, there are a number of reasons we still don't use wind power more widely. The first, and perhaps most important, is that the wind doesn't always blow, at least not always in the same spot, and technologies for storing lots of electricity for later use are currently very expensive. Another problem is location. It doesn't make sense to put wind farms just anywhere. The best sites are open, windy places, which are often far from city centers where energy demand is greatest. So long transmission lines are necessary to move the electricity to where it's needed. Finally, while wind farms are relatively cheap to operate, they cost a lot to build, especially in comparison to existing coal and natural gas power plants. The result is that many wind projects simply never get off the ground. At the moment, wind power makes up only a small portion of the electricity produced in America, but it's a rapidly growing industry that many experts believe could one day slash fossil fuel consumption. And just like solar, it will become cheaper and easier to use if we can find better ways to store the electrical energy it generates. Construction projects don't come much bigger than dams. Used for power generation, water storage and flood control, these vast structures play a critical role in the lives of billions every day. But with dams positioned far from our cities and with their metrics becoming harder to fathom the larger they get, the real size of these structures often goes unappreciated by the people they serve. To correct this, we've travelled the world and compared the largest dams with well-known buildings to show their true scale. These engineering feats are not just big, they're damn big. Unlike skyscrapers, stadiums or bridges, the term dam covers a wide range of designs, sizes and functions that encompasses more than 800,000 structures worldwide. While this makes defining a single structure as the world's largest dam near impossible, a number of key metrics can be used to rank these incredible feats of engineering. Located in China's Sichuan province, Jingping-1 broke records in 2014 when it became the tallest dam ever constructed. The 305-metre structure is just one metre shorter than London's Shard and holds back 7.7 .7 billion cubic metres of water, enough to submerge all of Manhattan in a 131-metre deep flood. With the 314-metre Shuangyangkou Dam in China and the 325-metre Bakhtiari Dam in Iran both currently under construction, Jinping One's reign as the world's tallest dam will soon come to an end. Built to create jobs during the Great Depression of the 1930s and to boost the development of the American Southwest, the Hoover Dam was a true titan of its time. Towering 221 metres above the canyon floor, the vast structure stood taller than all but six of the country's tallest skyscrapers at the time and took 3.3 million cubic metres of concrete to construct, 
enough to pave a 4,000 kilometer highway from San Francisco to New York City. Holding back the mighty Colorado River, the Hoover Dam created Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the United States to this day. Containing just over 40 cubic kilometers of water when it was first filled, enough to fill Sydney Harbour 80 times over, the capacity of the reservoir has reduced over time due to the accumulation of sediment deposits at the bottom, and its capacity now sits at 35.7 cubic kilometers. With an ongoing drought and increased water demand, Lake Mead currently sits at just 43% of its full capacity, and Lake Powell, the second largest reservoir in the United States, has held more water since 2013. Though concrete dams are big, embankment dams typically made from rock and compacted earth take size to the extreme. Located on the Indus River in Pakistan, the Tarbella Dam has the largest structural volume of any dam ever constructed and needed 153 million cubic meters of material, enough to cover the entire country of Monaco to a depth of 75 meters. Despite this accolade, the Tarbella Dam ranks surprisingly low in other metrics. The volume of water contained in its reservoir is just over one third of that in Lake Mead, and its maximum energy output is just over a quarter of the world's largest hydroelectric dam. With many of these structures used as hydroelectric power plants, installed capacity, or the combined output of all generators, is widely used as the measurement for ranking dams. By this metric, the Three Gorges Dam in China has been the world's largest since 2012, with 34 turbines and an installed capacity of 22,500 megawatts. Rising 181 meters and stretching for more than 2,300 meters across the Yangtze River, the dam is as long as three Burj Khalifas laid end to end or 1,352 Jean-Claude Van Dams. The structure took more than 16 million cubic meters of concrete to complete, enough to construct five Hoover Dams, and now holds back more than 39 cubic kilometers of water. NASA calculated that the mass contained in the dam's reservoir actually slowed the Earth's rotation by 0.06 microseconds. While the Three Gorges Dam pushed engineering to the extreme, the demands of our developing world and the needs of its ever-expanding population mean it's only a matter of time before an even larger dam is built. This video was made possible by Bluebeam. Learn more at the link below. And if you thought this video was damn good, and you'd like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M. The water of the oceans of the world is almost always in motion. Hardly ever interrupted, waves break at the coastlines, sometimes strong, sometimes weaker. There is an enormous energy potential that is available round the clock and free of charge. A potential that if fully exploited could satisfy 40% of the worldwide demand for power. This equals the output of 700 to 800 nuclear power stations. Foyt Hydro WaveGen is developing technologies to convert this inexhaustible energy into electric power without the emission of harmful greenhouse gases. The operating principle of this wave power station is as simple as it is ingenious. An enclosed chamber has an opening beneath sea level which allows water to flow from the sea to the chamber and back. The water level in the chamber rises and falls with the rhythm of the waves, and air is forced forwards and backwards through the turbine, connected to an upper opening in the chamber. As it is compressed and decompressed, the airflow has sufficient power to drive the well's turbine. It is a feature of the well's turbine named after its inventor, 
that it is driven in the same direction by both forward and reverse airflow through the turbine. Even relatively low wave motions can generate enough airflow to keep the turbine moving and to generate energy. This is how easily energy can be generated with a wave power station, day and night, all year round, as long as there are waves. The world's first power station of this kind was put in service as early as November 2000 on the Scottish island of Isla and has been feeding power to the grid ever since. Foyt Hydro WaveGen is convinced of the commercial potential of wave energy. We are certain that our wave power stations can make a significant contribution to supplying the world with climate-friendly energy. Foyt. Engineered reliability. In Iceland, nature is a challenge, an inspiration, and a gift. Our hydroelectric and geothermal power stations supply over 82% of Iceland's primary energy needs, and 100% of our house heating comes from renewable sources. Iceland is truly the land of renewable energy. Geothermal energy is one of the most important bases of quality of life and economic growth in Iceland. In the beginning of last century, we started building infrastructure in order to use the energy for heating of our houses. Within decades, Iceland had abandoned coal, public health had improved, and economic development accelerated, making Iceland one of the most advanced societies in the world. Since 1967, we have harvested geothermal energy for electrical production too. Today, 30% of our electricity is generated geothermally. In this time, we have acquired valuable expertise and experience that allows us to use our resources sustainably. No country in the world has so extensively used geothermal energy over the years, developing a cascaded approach to the utilization of geothermal energy. Utilizing geothermal for power generation, direct use, so for heating applications, bathing, industrial applications, food production, and so much more. And the cascaded use of geothermal energy, utilizing high temperature down to low temperatures, has been a tremendous contribution to the economy of Iceland. Icelandic companies and experts have helped develop multiple geothermal projects all over the world. Icelandic consultants are involved in all stages, research, design, construction, and resource management. And the different actors in the field have years of experience working together. With the extensive know-how and experience gained in developing geothermal projects in Iceland, 
Icelandic companies can contribute greatly to the support of development worldwide. Icelanders are a nation sculpted by the elements. We know that a healthy relationship with nature is everything. Let us help you give back to the environment.